Now, quite often when I'm working, I need to copy, say, a letter or some sort of shape. And lucky enough, I'm able to use tracing paper. But if you haven't got tracing paper, don't worry. There are other ways to solve the problem. Now, one of these ways is to cut out a template. Now, say you've got quite a simple shape. I've got an arrow here, and I've cut it out already. If I just show you, like that. You've then got a shape that you can draw around time and time again. I've got a piece of yellow paper here, and you just use your template, put it down on the paper, and just draw around it. And the good thing is that you can use different colour paper, and you know that each time you will get exactly the same shape. I've cut out some red and yellow ones, and I think I'll put them across here a bit like... This. Right, here they go. There we are. All the arrows, exactly the same size. Very neat, Margot. Oh, do you think so? I've Good. got something that sort of follows on right. to what you were doing. I'll move these out of the way. If you want to repeat a drawing that is rather too difficult to do by cutting out, here is a way. We'll draw a very simple little face here. Oh, I like it, Tony. Oh, do you? <laughs> well... That is pretty simple, but it'd be very, very difficult to cut out. So, what we do is to put chalk on the back. Now, what? does it matter how much chalk you put no, on the No, it training? doesn't matter no. in the least how much chalk, so long as you cover the drawing and rub it in with your finger. If you use cotton wool, you'll probably rub it all off. I need a <laughs> blow now. Now, it's a simple matter to trace the lines that you've made to repeat your original drawing. And what I have done, of course, is to use white chalk so that it comes out there it is. on black. Great. That's because if you wanted to use colours or something on another coloured background, yes. you can do it always. Hmm? Now, when I think of the East, I tend to think of precious stones, and in fact, the most precious stone in the world has to be a diamond. India, in fact, used to be the centre of the top, the big part of the semicircle. You want to cut, if I pull this down, you'll see, cut straight edges all the way round. You don't want to cut the semicircular shape. And also, when you're scoring the smaller semicircle in here, you want to actually score straight lines as well. And once you've done that, it's ready to pull it all together and just before you do that you get your scissors and you just snip away the points because you want to make a flat bottom to your diamond and then it's all ready to pull round so if you just start bending it round fold it inwards where you've scored it ease it round and a bit of tape on that. I've got, some, I've got some tape here. You won't actually see this tape. It's on the outside. And then, if you just bend in here, all the way around, bend in like this. There they go. And then, once you've done that, just tape, put a bit of extra tape, holding these together. And this will make the facets of the diamond. You just have to go around sticking the tape have we done it? No, just one more. And then you need to stick your base onto your diamond, which is just a folded piece of card, which I'm sticking on just at either side there. And just watch when I turn it over. 
If you look at this, can you see that? Look, if I move it around, it really sparkles in the light, doesn't it? And there's one more thing. You just need to put a top onto this, and that's also a folded piece of card, which I've scored. It's a semicircular shape. You can see the size there, a little bit bigger than your original shape. And you just want to fold it round, and you just need a little bit of tape. Stick it there, and that will then sit on the top of your diamond. And let's see how this is going to look. And there we are. Can you see that? And there is my diamond. And the really nice thing about making these diamonds is you can go on and you can make lots more facets. I've got a much bigger diamond over here. Have a look at this one. And if you'd like to make your own diamond, why don't you write into us? I've prepared a fact sheet. And if you send a stamped addressed envelope, we'll send that fact sheet to you. I was looking through a book on Japan and came across what I thought was a rather beautiful picture, this. I say thought because it turned out that it wasn't just a picture. It was, in fact, something three-dimensional made of metal. This isn't, of course, this is, this is cardboard. But that's what it was, a crab with a hole in the middle and so forth. I thought, well, that would make a lovely rubbing. One could get a wax rubbing for, from that. So not wax crayon I'm using, but candle wax. I expect a lot of you know what I'm leading up to, but if you, if you don't, well, I'm not being completely idiotic. I know you can't see anything yet, but you will any minute. If that goes there, and I take some cotton wool and a little ink. I can develop a picture. And slowly, slowly, the wax starts showing through. There. Now we'll put this to dry properly. And I'll tell you what this is really for. I thought at the time that perhaps it could have been the top of a money box, but no, that is not what it is. In fact, it goes with this. A Japanese-type samurai sword made by me out of cardboard. And I'm sure you're with me by now. There. It's a sword guard. I expect the samurai, when they were training, weren't allowed to use them without it. What I think is so delightful is when art is not only beautiful, but useful. Don't you agree? <laughs> Oh, 
Right, Tony, mm. get that round. There we are. Right. Oh, it's all neat and tidy, I think. That was a good gallery today. Wonderful today, yeah. yes, mm. very good. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Margo, is there anything else we have to do nope. before we leave? I think that's a lot. I keep thinking I've left Ready something to go? somewhere. No. Who's got um, the key? I think you've got it. I'll just switch out the light. Right.